This is Belief Radio, positive thinking radio for positive thinking people with Rich Smith and Phil Keeler. To find out more about us and listen to the show, go to beliefradio.com or download us directly from iTunes. You can also listen to the latest show on the Belief Global YouTube channel and sometimes even see us. Uh, scary stuff, eh? Um, follow us on Twitter at Belief Global and facebook and if you want to uh, learn more about the range of products and services we offer do go to beliefglobal.com send your emails to info at beliefglobal.com thank you very much mr keeler i'm rich smith um you're sounding very chirpy today is that because it's christmas yeah i think it's christmas uh, the end of 2013 almost yeah i'm in a good mood today and because we've Excellent. had some interesting discussions whilst <laughs> getting ready for the show. <laughs> we certainly have, and I, I, I can't... Uh, well, if you bribe my hands with silver and gold, then I might uh, reveal a few of those things to you. So just send your emails directly to me with the amount that you want to uh, give me, and I'm, I may divulge a few. But other than that, <laughs> I'm not going to, and we're going to stick to what we're supposed to be doing on this show, which this last show of 2013 is... I think quite fittingly going to be revisiting this subject that we're all into, which is relationships, mm. having good relationships, um, because life yeah. is is all about relationships. And particularly, you know, we all maybe like a bit of love in our life, I guess. So um, I mean, that's what I thought we'd focus on. Yeah, relationships covers, you know, every every part of our lives from business um, to to pleasure, doesn't it? So everything it certainly does um you know and uh, we could equally um go in any of those directions on this show but i think we're going to stick to sort of maybe around the area of of having a good romantic relationship a good partnership in your life with somebody special yeah so i think that's what this show is going to be about sure and uh, do you think you could talk about belief global first rich because we've got a whole new set of uh, i suppose listeners now because we're now broadcasting on our own belief global youtube channel as well as beliefradio.com and and on itunes aren't we absolutely well for those who are, who are just tuning in or have never never tuned into belief global ever before um and also maybe as a nice reminder for those who um who've been avid fans for a while now and of course we've got maybe um i think it's something like over 120 countries we broadcast out to yeah. so um you're out there listening to us belief global is essentially about helping people and organizations and teams, whether it's a sports team, a business team, a creative team, um, an individual going through life challenges or looking to um, set their own company up or, um, or change their career or achieve whatever they want to achieve in life. It's helping all these different people to be massively successful in their chosen field. Belief Radio was set up so that we can broadcast out to as many people around the world who want to listen to us um, and inspire them for free on on particular subjects and areas of and aspects of the life that are important to you and give you some inspiration and motivation so that you can go and make changes to live a memorable and happy life belief global is the overall company that um controls not just belief radio but belief sport because obviously uh, those who are out there in the Dragon Boat world or sporting worlds, know us from um, the TV coverage that we do for live sporting events, particularly in Dragon Boating, uh, a subject which uh, is close to my heart, having once you know, uh, represented Great Britain in, in Dragon Boating and was proud to do so. So Belief Sport is about TV and, uh, and radio in the sporting uh, fields. Um, and we're very much uh, a company about coaching, enabling, uh, training, people and organizations to achieve their goals in life uh and you know if you want to find out more about what we do then obviously talk to me email us at the uh, various different ways that phil's given you um info at beliefglobal.com the twitter uh, account um facebook as well and uh, start to learn more about what we do but we're about enabling people to live happy memorable and very successful lives and of course if you're into wealth and you want to be the next millionaire billionaire or maybe even with the world's first trillionaire um then some of the stuff we give out free on this belief radio podcasting show uh, will help you to acquire both the skills and the will to achieve your wealth goals as well excellent 
So relationships then, end of the year, looking at uh, the new year 2014, lots of people will be talking to their friends and family about a relationship that they want to get into or out of maybe. What do they do, (laughs) Rich? Yeah, well, um, you know, of course, at this time of year, um, Christmas time is a can be a, um, a, a a bit of a stressor for people regarding relationships because sometimes you're, you know, I think there's a, 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 a quite a high divorce percentage or a separation uh, percentage increase over the festive period when families are forced to be together, maybe. And it brings out some of the, um, or you know, uh, the anomalies going on within relationships, where some people feel they can no longer live a lie and just feel they have to take some action in the new year and start a, a different life. Um, but let's just try and um, <laughs> think about. Uh, uh, let, I'd like to. I'd like to keep the show looking at how to how to have a great relationship. Um, hmm. We all. We all need relationships at various levels, and uh, and I guess that's where I would start. Is the starting point for me is is for an individual person, for you uh, and me, to understand what is it uh, that you need a relationship to satisfy in you. Hmm. Uh, because that's you know uh, I, I remember talking to a counsellor friend years ago, and she used to say you know a, a lot of the work she did with couples in trouble she would say to them, you know, relationships exist to satisfy a need. And once the need that you originally got together for has been satisfied, has when, when that's over, if you like, and, and has been satisfied or it's no longer needed, then maybe there's no longer a need for that particular relationship. So the onus is that you have to evolve your relationship from the original reasons you first met to keep it alive and keep it together. Um, I think uh, understanding what it is that you need as a person is very important. Uh, and not uh, quite often we go looking for happiness in other people. Uh, and I think it, quite often we should start by looking for the happiness within ourselves and understanding, getting clear within ourselves about what do, you know, a good question to ask is, what do I stand for as a person and what do I want from other people in my life who I allow into my life? Because if you get clear on those two 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 areas, um, it could potentially save you a lot of heartache and may lead to you uh, almost sidestepping certain relationships which you get an opportunity to get into but choose not to because you know that it's not going to um, give you what you need. And it certainly probably won't give the other person what they need because quite often we get initially lured into a relationship through an attraction, quite often a sort of romantic, sexual, maybe uh, attraction. Uh, But, you know, lust wears off over time. And then what you're left, you know, often it's said that love is what you're left with after the love subsides. But um, not always, you know, sometimes you're left with nothing because the lust has gone and you don't feel love for that person. Or... Or practically, you're just not honest with people and you won't say what you really need from another person. Or if something's not working, rather than say that it's not working, so it give give you a chance to do something about it, you just withdraw and then make an excuse up and do something completely different. You know, if you take anger, for example, outbursts of anger are common even in healthy relationships but often anger is the secondary emotion going on, almost the cry for help that hides the primary emotion, such as fear, sadness, f- maybe fear of being abandoned. And so quite often we need to look behind the hidden messages that people give off, uh, uh, ignore the angry tone and, and try and see what people are really saying to you. So when your partner might accuse you of always being work, you know, being a workaholic, What they actually might be saying to you, really, the code might be, I miss you and I'd like to spend more time with you. Yeah. And so there, you know, if you like, is is one good example of um, of how you build a good relationship is is rather than getting angry with each other is learn to communicate better and learn to understand what you're actually saying to each other. Uh, And you think about the way you communicate with people. They say that. um, I think it's something like 80 to 90 percent of a total message when it's communicated doesn't come from the words you say. It comes from your body language and the tone of voice you use. Um, 
And so if somebody's being angry when they're trying to tell you how they feel, you pick up on that tone if you're not careful and you just get into an angry cycle of arguing with them instead of really hearing, really listening to what people are trying to convey, looking past the initial um, hurt or anger and trying to understand what's really going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. And I think what people, well, what I look for in a relationship and, and what a lot of people I know look for in a relationship is equality. That's a big one, isn't it? Well, I think that is definitely something that we would all like. It doesn't always happen that way, though, does it? No. <laughs> 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 and, and that's where where I guess the problems come and that actually is uh, would be one of the things that I would say is important in relationships is sharing the power together because we both have power in a relationship we both need to feel valued and, and we both need to compromise and maybe not sweat the small stuff um, but also be willing to share control and share power because sometimes um, whilst intellectually we might say we want equality in practice uh, some people turn out to be total control freaks on everything and uh, even though they would deny it if you accuse them of it yeah. uh, and that again is about communicating and uh, and being willing uh, to be uh, be a flexible because i think relationships are about compromise you know the ones that last the test of time are about compromise and collaboration and knowing that you can't always win you can't always get your own way you have to there has to be some give and take and um, those people that say I'm not giving I'm just gonna I'm just gonna almost rule the roost and do everything my way and everybody will bend to my rules well that's more or less a modern day dictatorship and uh, yes, yes. it doesn't exactly it doesn't actually juice you up on the love stakes to be dictated to all the time unless you happen to be that sort of person who actually gets off on that sort of thing but most people would probably like to feel that they're equal in a relationship so i think hmm. um it is about finding common goals um uh, because no commonality is a bit like a ticking time bomb you know there's no shared dreams um so there's nothing to almost work together towards. Yeah. So you start to drift and maybe develop your own dreams that are separate from each other. And before you know it, over a period of time, you've both, you're both technically speaking still in a relationship, but you're operating totally different plans, which are go, which the, and the more that time goes by without talking to each other, you're, you're on um, rails that aren't ever going to ever gonna come together. You're just drifting apart. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. So commonality and discussing about, well, what, what do you, you know, I mean, I know we've talked on previous shows about when we're talking about achieving goals is saying, what do you want to be, do and have in your life? And yes, that's fine to think about it for yourself. But I think you should ask that same question in a relationship together. What do we want to be? do and have for our relationship in our life hmm. um it's a very good you know question it's very thought-provoking and it provides you know an objective question that you can both participate in and say well okay let's talk about it or let's write down a few ideas and then share them with each other a bit like a game and see you know see what we're actually saying um you know it also implies that you've got to be honest because if you if you just say what you think the other person's going to say you haven't got very far you need to just be brave enough to say well you know, here's some of the things that i would really like to do in a relationship and see where there are crossovers and also accept that there's not going to be crossovers on everything there's going to be certain things that the other person cannot stand yes but therein lies an opportunity to create some independence as well because you don't fine. have to be glued Sorry? And that's fine to do. And that's absolutely mm. fine. And it's very healthy to have yeah. some different interests as well. So that, you know, you go off and do a few things on your own and you can bring back those shared, those, those individual experiences and share them with your partner. It keeps things interesting and alive. And it might actually lead to the opposite partner thinking, well, that's, that's interesting what you're doing. I, you know, I might come along next time or whatever. But yeah. it's good to have some time of your own. Uh, and uh, I don't know. There's so many things we could say about relationships, but I think it's, I think good good relationships do some some pretty basic principles a lot of the time. And if if there was one that I would 
say above all else is is, is solidify friendships and relationships because quite often when you first come together it is a, a physical attraction and uh, and that that's important to have that inner relationship but you've also got to feel friends you know genuine friendship with with one another because yeah. you, you you know you are going to spend a lot of time you can't physically it's almost an impossibility to have sex every second of the day together oh. when you're you know when you're not i know you might find that uh, not challenging phil but uh, <laughs> let's not go there really um but solidifying friendships where you actually uh, really start to connect at an emotional level, a spiritual level, not just a physical level, um, that also uh, it depends on, on your attachment style, and which equally is a function of, um, of your childhood experiences. Because if you have an ins insecure sort of attachment style, then um, you're likely to be quite jealous of, of your partner or, mm. or anybody who interacts with your partner. You can have obs obsessive tendencies, um, emotional highs and lows. And you need to get to a place of security in yourself and start becoming um, more connected with your partner by maybe learning about each other, doing more things together that you both enjoy so that you build up an attachment and a bond which is strong and it's over and above uh you know uh kissing hugging sex and all those things you, mm. you equally you know you, you can go and have a walk and all, i don't mean you can't hold hands it's just learn to become friends with each other there is a phrase that says what starts as friends ends as friends well i think yeah that that could be true that you know um if you, if you had a friendship to start with then if it did end then you might still be able to preserve a friendship afterwards not always easy because it depends how you ended um but I think if you build up that solid friendship, then that's probably the best way to avoid having to end in the first place. Sure. Long-term relationships have their foundation stone as friendship. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think that's excellent advice. Um, <clears throat> I think when you're uh, maybe... A lot of people split up and don't ever see, see their partners again, don't they? But um, I think if you're friends with them first... Why not be friends with them afterwards? I think that's it's quite a nice thing yeah. to, to do, to be. I think it is, but it, like I say, it depends on the other person and uh, and what 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 almost slant they choose to put on the way it ended, and that's a lot about their own uh, insecurity or security or um, or whether they want to keep blaming somebody else. Because usually, one person will be the trigger. You might, you know, quite often. Also, there can be a, a, occasions where both people come to the same conclusion, more or less, at a, same, at a similar point, and uh, just agree that we, we, there's nothing left um, to carry on with. But quite often, um, it will be one person who is the catalyst to start something off, so the other person is going to always feel like it was done to them. Yeah. And and it is easy to, to get into this feeling aggrieved, and uh you know resentful that you've been the one to be ditched so to speak um and but i think if you can rise above that and actually see things for what they are and ask the question well were you happy were you actually really happy um yeah. sometimes you might actually be happy and it might be a complete bolt out of the blue where somebody says they don't want to be with them anymore and it's a, a shock to the system and i guess that might make you feel um very upset because you're going to lose something which you valued um but you know, it's a pinch of salt, I guess. You, you, you know, um, there's no ideal way way to end. But we're trying to look at not ending and actually um, <laughs> how to build good relationships. Um, and I think the root the root foundation, like we said, is friendship. I think you need to stay focused in the present moment to ensure to almost to assure your future. Yeah, because. The future, you know, the future is something that's going to happen. But you can create your future by you know really tuning in and being in the moment with your partner not always being too busy to um, acknowledge them or listen to the what you might call minutiae of life because relationships are about sharing the day-to-day -day things with each other and letting pe each other know how you're feeling and thinking um and uh, and by doing these little things it enables you to stay close together so that you can help each other, especially through the rough patches, because yeah. quite often uh, um, relationships break down when one or both of the both of you hit a really rough time, 
Uh, if you haven't got uh, a solid foundation of friendship and if you never spend that much time together and you don't listen to each other and you don't pay attention to the little things or you don't ever seem to have any time for sharing what some people might view as the ordinary moments, yes, then you've got nothing in your kit bag when a, a rough storm comes along and the storm will just rip up whatever you had because you didn't have much. It was a bit of a facade. Make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's about communication, isn't it? You know, um, yep. <laughs> something I... Uh, for me personally, I like to know how the other person is during their day because yes. why wouldn't you if you have a genuine interest in that person? Yes, uh, some absolutely. Pe- some people think that's a really controlling thing. And I, I, yeah. I, well, I fired off a text to you today, didn't I? Uh, you did. We can talk about that a little bit. And you know, there is a genuine, if, you, if you're going out with somebody, if you like the person, then why not know what they're doing how they're feeling are they having a good or bad day that's not that's not controlling what is controlling is if you're firing off texts and you know telephoning them 24 hours a day wanting to know where they are that's totally different i think but uh... yeah um again i think there's no right or wrongs because it depends on the type of relationship you've got i mean i know relationships that work very successfully where literally there are agreements between husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend a partner or whatever um where you agree that uh, from Monday to Friday, that is work mode, and you're going to, you know, be totally committed to getting all the work stuff done that you need to do, and uh, almost uh, not being together during that period, um, and just being totally, totally focused. Um, uh, but then, the moment Friday night comes, all the way through to Monday morning, um, the weekends are absolutely sacrosanct, and they're only for the family or for the relationship yeah. and nothing else you know nobody works over the weekend um might sound severe to some people but it works for some whereas you know others you know the the need they have in their relationship is like you say to have a tactile um steady um series of communications happening little texts uh, little calls here and there um all through the day because that's the sort of thing that that that's the need that you want within you. So that's what you need to have satisfied. And clearly, if you don't get that, then it will it's going to gnaw away at you eventually, and it probably will lead to a breakdown of relationships. So that's why I said right at the start of the program that it is very important to get clear within yourself about what you stand for and what you actually need from a relationship. Because um, my view is that you've got to get you've got to be vertically healthy within yourself so that no matter what happens to you you're not reliant on another per- person another third party for your happiness so it's a bit like making a cake we might have used this analogy before you know you can have a fantastic cake which is a metaphor for you being a fantastic happy person single yeah but if you put a cherry on the cho- top with a bit of icing then it makes the cake look even nicer and so, you know, it's finding a relationship which is worth having and worth putting that cherry on the top. And uh, that's what I think a good relationship is. It completes you. Mm. I'd rather... Gives s- you- Sorry. No, it just gives you something more. That's all, all I was going to say. I'd rather use that analogy with chocolate instead of cake, though, Rich. Whatever you want to use. Yeah. Toblerone. It's fine. Toblerone um, is the way forward in any relationship. Oh, well, yes, that's your preference and you're entitled to your view. I'm not <laughs> going to be drawn on uh, chocolate because I don't want to upset anybody, but uh, you get the point that we're talking I do. about. I do. It's, it's, a good, it's a good point. It's a good image that people should have in their, their mind's eye. So, Rich, uh, we're coming into the end of the show. What three you know, crucial tips can you give people to have a successful relationship? <laughs> The first one I would say is be positive as a person and in your communication style. It's so easy to get hurt by something and break into what I call a negative cycle. Uh, And, uh, you know, the relationship starts to feel troubled because you start to pick on things um, and, um, and, and it becomes destructive. So be positive as a person. Try and give out good vibes each day because what you give out, you will get back. You reap what you sow. Um, Number two is look for the good in each other. Yeah. And again, all right, I suppose it's sort of a repetition slightly of, of number one, but it's like consciously each day 
look for the good in, in, in one another. Find something you can praise about the other person and tell them. Um, and, um, you know, and, uh, but my one caveat to that would be make sure that whatever you tell them is positive and it is genuine. Don't yeah. just say things for the sake of it because people can see straight through that. Um, be positive. See the good in each other. And number three is um, is learn to be good friends with each other. Um, you know that that would be my number one goal in a relationship is is get get to a point where you can honestly feel like your partner is a friend to you, uh, because that gives you such a strong foundation to build everything else on top. Um, and the final thought around it all, really, is um, remember what we say on previous shows when we when you look to is avoid criticizing because nobody's perfect. And the, the point of coming together into a relationship is like taking two halves and making a whole. Nobody is perfect. We're all going to have little deficiencies. And uh, you just have to be quick to praise and slow to criticize. And remember that when you do criticize other people, three fingers will always be pointing back at you when you go to point at somebody else. Mm. So stop and think before you open your mouth uh, and think, why are you saying this and how could you say it differently? to get the response you're looking for because we don't always say what we're really feeling we tend to talk in code and hope that the other person is a mind reader and can work us out um so that's what i would say be positive see the good in it, other people get friendly with your partners good advice as always rich um followers on twitter i'm really wor working twitter feed at the moment uh followers at uh, belief global and you can also join us on our Facebook groups as well. Um, and, and the final point for me would be just to say, have a great Christmas, yeah. whatever you're doing. And 2013 has been a wonderful year. And look into the future and look at 2014. And when you enter that new year, new year, new start, get clear on those goals again. I think we'll be doing a show in the new year about goal setting. And go and make whatever hasn't happened this year happen next year. 